Hey, Doobers! Mike Martins here, Mike Martins Channel. I got a really good article coming out of Toronto, to the Toronto Housing Fix. Be careful for what you wish for. With Toronto housing getting harder and harder to afford, governments are under pressure to do something always dangerous moment. Several ideas are kicking around, most of them raging from dubious to the awful. A tax on foreign buyers has clear political appear, appeal. Housing prices soaring out of control. Blame the Chinese, never mind. If we have little evidence that a flood of foreign money is driving up prices, why not just why not just try it? What harm could it do? That's exactly what I said when they implied it. Try it. Okay, if it's not it, it's not it. But ever since they implied the tax in Vancouver, the tsunami went east to Toronto and it went south to Seattle. Look at some of my trends in the housing market videos and I actually go into great detail in explaining what's happening, how it's happening, and how the Canadians are bought out. Go to New Zealand. The New Zealand proper, the Kiwi proper, is bought out. They're finished. They're living in garages. 40 people to a house. Look at my other video I did. 40 people to a house, 8 to a room in New Zealand. New Zealand proper cannot afford to live. A tax on foreign buyers has a clear political appeal. Housing prices soaring out of control. Blame the Chinese. Never mind. We have little evidence. I just did that. I just read that. Let me just click here and scroll down just a bit. Quite a bit, in fact. The proposal has a whiff of Trump, uh, Trumpian nativism. So anything that goes that goes against the liberal or status quo, you're considered a Trumpist or a Trump bump or you're considered a racist. And every time you win a, 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 an argument against a liberal, you're a racist. Toronto for Torontonians, that is, that is unbecoming for a city of immigrants. Toronto's prosperity depends on its reputation as an open, welcoming place. We want foreign investment. The more, the better. No, you don't want more foreign, because it's just going to raise prices, and the Toronto Torontonian proper cannot afford to buy in his own country. The more, the better. It's a sign of success, and overseas money is flowing real estate here, and it does in, in, in London, New York, and great cities around the world. Look what's happening in Sydney and Melbourne. If you're from Sydney and Melbourne, I know you're following it. I know you're watching my video. Comment below and let these people from Toronto know what's going on. Slapping more controls on rent is tempting. Two, places built after 1991 face caps on annual rent increases. Landlords can charge whatever. So landlords can charge, eh? Tenant advocates complain that rents have been soaring. Why not just extend rent controls to these newer buildings as the NDP legislator is proposing in a private member bill? The trouble is, is that capping what landlords can charge discourages developers from building rental housing in the first place. If they can't make a buck off a of rental, they will build more condos instead. Condos is the best mafia. The best mafia you get into is the condo business. Why? Because you almost charge rent for stratum. You get some guy to come over, doesn't even need to know the language, just bring him over, get him to clean a few windows and some floors, come in once a week, do a little vacuuming, make a little noise in the hallways. Boom, your 400 a month goes towards that. If they can't make a buck, say, yeah, condos is the, the best mafia business ever. Rental housing is, is the in the midst the most the modest comeback. The Mervish, Mervish Village project that the site of the old Honest Ed store is all rental. Several other big rental developments are in the works. Extending rent controls could bring down the curtain on the show just as it gets started. Yeah, I remember Honest Ed's. I remember I shopped there many times when I was a child. Slipping, slipping a tax on vacant properties is plausible. You got 98,000 empty properties, put a tax on, 2%. There you go, the, uh, the province can make its budget, can make its deficit, no worries. If it can be shut down that speculators really are keeping property off the market and holding down supply, it's not clear that's the case. It's not clear, you got 98,000 empty properties, how is it not clear? Mary, uh, uh, Mayor John Tory was wisely cautious when f uh, he flooded the idea. He wants to gather more data before deciding it makes sense. Here's the data, 98 or 99,000 empty properties. That's all the data you need. And it's coming from a guy that can't even read and has no education. How about loosening controls on urban sprawl then? Some developers... Uh, some developers blame the soaring housing prices on provincial rules that are protest farmland and discourage. Oh yeah, take up the farmland so people can eat. 
Import everything overseas. Import the meat from everywhere else. Yeah, of course, that's what we want. Eating the, um, easing those rules save would increase the supply of land and lower the cost of building houses, at least one study. But the Neptis Foundation found that there is still lots of land left for subdivisions within the limits drawn by Ontario government. So I'm going to leave a link below. I'm, I'm, I'm getting pretty hot reading this thing and I'm not going to... I'm not going to continue reading this because I'm just going to lose my mind. They don't learn from what happened in Vancouver, what happened in Sydney, what happened in Melbourne, what happened in Auckland. They don't learn anything. And then now, who's going to pay? The futures of the children. Children's futures. Africa's doing the same thing, but not with housing. They're taking on these illegal loans from God knows what, from all these, other, all these countries that don't have the money to lend them. Then African countries are becoming impoverished and, and debt to loans and they have all the minerals, they have all, all they have everything under, under their feet. Arguably the, the richest continent times five in the world with everything the world needs to sustain itself coming from Africa, but yet stays the poorest continent on earth. So if someone could comment below and maybe explain exactly what is going on here, could maybe educate me because I've seen it happen here and I've seen it happen all over the place. And I saw it happen in 2007 when I was in Miami, 2006. I saw the bubble. I saw the average condo in Miami go from $60,000 for a condo to $150,000 for a condo. And then boom, crash. And then now they're back at forty, fifty thousand 50000 a condo. Let me know what you guys think. Comment below. Is this healthy? Is there enough supply in the world for, for, for investing in homes? You know, let me know. Comment below.